Welcome everyone to February 2024's session of Spiritual Questions Answered and welcome everyone. So uh, just a little heads up, it's uh, Chinese New Year right now and uh, tonight is the eighth, uh, eighth night of Chinese New Year and uh, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, we're here in Malaysia and certain uh, dialect group of Chinese on the eighth night they celebrated uh, really a lot and um, they may be you guys may be hearing some fire fireworks firecrackers that kind of thing okay but the um, it should the the peak should be at 12 midnight okay but you still hear some so just be prepared if you guys are wondering it's not gunshots or anything okay so and um, let's get down to the topic at hand so the topic at hand is caring for and cleansing of crystals so um, just to give you all a little bit of my background, I started out on this uh, energy path with crystals and that was way back in 2009. So um, everything that led me on to energy and spiritual work started with crystals. So basically before 2009, uh, you know, um, I thought that people who buy crystals, especially when they spend a lot of money on crystals, are being you know are being swindled you know it's like you know yeah you buy all these rocks and stuff but to believe rocks can have uh, special energies and everything is kind of you know i thought it's it you know it was illogical to me okay and i had some experiences whereby eventually i found that hey uh crystals actually do have energy and i went um I, I actually went kind of like a uh, crazy, you know, I was like mind blown and I totally went into like, um, I need to understand how can certain rocks have certain energies and have effects on people that cannot be explained by science. All right. So that started my journey into um, this energy world and eventually into spiritual world. Now, um, that was in 2009. So uh, when I first started out, I was mainly doing crystals and feng shui. And eventually I encountered Cordelia and then uh, went into energy healing and especially spiritual healing. Okay. So uh, the thing is this now, um, as the master trainer of Inhinity program, all right, we have our own Inhinity program whereby we train energy healers. Um, I actually don't teach about crystals until very late in the program, until module 10. All right, and uh, there is a particular reason. So first of all, um, I will be sharing with you how to care for and cleanse crystals. But I also need to give you all some um, basic understanding about crystals. Now, many of us uh, buy crystals from crystal shops, right? Uh, crystal retailers, crystal shops. And most people buy crystals um, either for beauty or because they believe in the energetic properties, right? And believe uh, most of you here who are attending it uh, this session live, especially you believe in the energetic properties or metaphysical properties of crystals. And yes, I can ascertain for you that it is true that a lot of the crystals have certain metaphysical or energy properties that can help us. Um, but between two thousand nine and um, now, I've discovered that it is actually um, not so good to rely on crystals anymore. So um, normally when I teach my students, um, I do not encourage them to use crystals at the beginning. All right, there, there are a few reasons, okay, a few reasons. So just to share with you also, um, uh, so it's kind of funny, I'm uh, talking about caring for and cleansing crystals, but I, I don't highly encourage. So. Um, one of the reasons why is because uh, some people end up becoming too dependent. Some people end up becoming too, too dependent on crystals and it's not something that's very empowering people to strengthen their energies. All right. So um, if you start with crystals and you keep on looking for more and more crystals to support your energy instead of developing your energy, I think that is not the right path uh, for any people anybody who's interested in energy work right so um, for my students i don't i don't teach crystals until they are actually sufficiently independent now um the second reason i would say might be the main reason why i discourage um, i have found that in recent years 
most of the crystals that are sold by retailers are tainted. Somehow the energies of most of the crystals that are being sold are no longer pure and most of them have negative energies um, and some including entities within the crystals. And I, in my line of work in energy and spiritual healing, I've had to, you know, I deal with cases whereby I have, I have to help clients who are affected by crystals that are tainted or that are possessed um, or, yeah, or um, an entity or evil spirit was transferred from crystal to, to people. So I, I do encounter this. So um, for this reason, I do not actually encourage it very much. Uh, some of you will be very inclined to use crystals and you will be energy sensitive enough to be able to identify your crystals. And I did mention in one of my earlier talks, so um, about selecting the right crystals for yourself. All right, so selecting for right crystals for yourself is actually very important. Uh, that was addressed in the previous talk, um, I think maybe quite a few years back. Now, I'm going to talk about how to care for and cleanse crystals, but bear in mind, I do not actually encourage people to you know, be dependent on crystals and you've got to watch out for crystals that are tainted. All right, you've got to learn to recognize whether the crystal is actually helping you or the, whether the crystal might be draining you. All right, so if you're into energy for crystals or crystals, please bear that in mind. Okay, so we're going to talk about caring for and cleansing crystals. So I'm going to talk firstly about the um, normal methods that are always talked about. Okay, so the normal methods that are talked about is one would be using water. Running water, sea water, salt water, lake water, waterfall water, so all kinds of stuff. Right, different kinds of water. Um, the significant one I'm going to mention is salt water. I will list down everything and then um, talk a little bit about it. Some people will talk about using smudging. Some will talk about um, using the sun, using the moon, using the earth. Seven, uh, in recent years, um, there are a lot of people going for using essential oil. Alright, uh, did I miss out any of the normal? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, you have those um, sound bath. Right, sound bath using uh, different singing bowls, crystal singing bowls or whatever. Um, number nine, a common method is to use another crystal. Another, usually a big crystal. Correct? So, um, these are the normal methods to try and care for the crystals. Now, why do crystals need caring? Alright, why do crystals need caring? So I want to, before I talk about all these methods, I want everyone to understand why in the first place crystals need to be cared for or need to be cleansed. So um, it's mainly due to this. So crystals work based on two things. All right, so crystals, uh, the way crystals work. One thing is they absorb negative energies. All right, whether it's from the environment or from the owner, the wearer, the person who wears uh, crystals, the one of the ways they work is by absorbing negative energies. The second way they work is by 
lending or even giving positive energies. That is the other way crystals work. Generally, these are the two ways crystals work. So now, if you have some experience using crystals, you will notice that eventually, you know, when you first buy a crystal, you may find that, hey, the crystals have a quite a profound effect or very good effect on you. And maybe after some time or over time, the effectiveness of the crystal tends to drop. All right. So what might be the reason? And usually it's this. Usually it's because the crystal have absorbed a lot of negative energies either from you or the environment where it's placed at. Alright, so it's kind of like a vacuum cleaner. Okay? So, you, all, you guys know vacuum cleaners, right? So when a vacuum cleaner absorbs, you know, suck, 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 suck all the dirt, what happens in the, in the, towards the end? The vacuum cleaner becomes uh, less effective. Okay? So, um, yeah, uh, those who are just new here, just bear in mind it's Chinese New Year uh, and the people are letting off some, you know, fireworks, firecrackers kind of thing. So, um, not done shots. Okay? So, when crystals absorb a lot of negative energies, they are become like vacuum cleaners and they can't function as well as before. Alright? Now, the second thing is crystals can also lend and give positive energies to their wearers or to the environment. And eventually, its own positive energies will fade out. Especially when it absorbs a lot of negative energies and it's also giving out its own positive energies, right? Without being able to recharge, then it gets into a problem. All right, so we actually need um, for crystals, right, to deal with these two issues. So we need to help them to cleanse. They need to be cleansed. It means remove the negative energies that it has absorbed and um, they kind of need to be like charged up or recharged something like that okay so and if you go to the crystal sellers they will normally tell you these type of things all right, these are the standard things uh, that you can learn um, from people who deal with crystals and also when you um, search on the internet, okay? So water, salt water. Now, first of all, water and salt water can work, all right? But the effects are not, say, very high. Um, like, um, it's good to have, like, running water and everything. But when you're using these two methods, you need to please search the internet google or something to ensure that your crystal is not soluble in water all right you need to make sure that the crystals are not soluble in water before you use this and yes it can work to a certain degree and of course the purer the kind of water that is used the better salt water is generally better than your your pipe water your tap water Right? And if you can go to a nice waterfall whereby the energies are good, you know, or the seaside whereby the sea is not polluted, those kind of waters can be very good. Now smudging, I hope you all know what smudging is. So smudging is like using um, herbal plants, right? They burn it in, until it's smoked and the smoke that is released can have very good energies. For example, people use sage, white sage, different types of sage, uh, different types of plants with... Um, um, nice smells usually and usually is from traditional practices right they use smudging so smudging can help to a certain degree and some people will mention the Sun uh, this one um, I really have to put a big asterisk mark over there uh, no not asterisk mark I need to put a big cross okay in general I do not advise people to use the Sun unless you know what you are doing all right if you want to use the Sun Okay, um, you should only use it during like dawn or dusk when the sun is not, when it's not sunny. Alright, so a lot of people when they think about using the sun, you need to be very sunny and um, if you do that, you will tend to damage your crystals. Alright, um, I know this because I paid my price. I paid my price. I lost, uh, I've weakened a lot of crystals by exposing them to the sun, to the midday sun. You know, of course, um, yeah, in those days, uh, people do recommend that. 
Now, firstly, let me talk a little bit about this. Huh? Yeah. I hope everyone understands that most crystals are formed in the dark, underground. All right, underground in the dark, so they're not exposed to the sun. Now, the sun has very harmful uh, UV rays that can damage the crystals, especially crystals that are colored. There are only a few types of crystals that won't be damaged by the sun. All right, and uh, for example, citrine won't be so not so damaged. All right, but if you have uh, amethyst, the purple color quartz, you put it out in the sun, it's going to get damaged. You have a uh, Rose quartz is going to get damaged. So a lot of colored crystals, if you expose it to the sun, it's going to get damaged. And if you're sensitive to energy, you notice that the energy gets weakened. All right. So a moon, on the other hand, is quite safe because the moon energy is not so, uh, not so strong in terms of light. But I will put a question mark. Okay. Uh, so this this can work now. Um, I advise people to also be careful with the moon because. There are people who use the moons, you know, under moonlight, and they find that their crystals get painted by moonlight, and there is a reason for that. So, um, um, the moon is also used in dark magic rituals. All right, dark magic, dark practices. So, uh, if you are very unlucky and there's, uh, if, you know, you are putting out your crystals on a night whereby. It is supposed to be a night of uh, high dark magic and a lot of dark magic practitioners are tapping onto the moon and adding to the dark energies. Then you're going to find your moon energy is going to taint your crystal. All right. So if that happens to you while you're using moon energy, you know what's happened. Okay. So um, using earth is generally a good idea. Generally. All right. And so what some people do is they, they will... Um, bury the crystals in the earth, okay? Bury the crystals in the earth. So most people, they only do that when they don't want to, their crystals anymore and they want to return the crystals to earth. But for some people, they do keep it under the earth to help it recharge because crystals do come from the earth. Now, this is generally an okay method as long as the, the area of the earth where you use is um, of good energy. All right, so in general, nice place. If you feel the area's energy is quite okay, then it's quite safe. Right, but there may be areas whereby the energies of the earth are not too good. Or for example, um, you know, don't do it at the graveyard. Don't do it near the hospital. All right, don't do it in the city whereby the energies are very stressed, uh, stressful or whereby there's construction nearby, then the energies of the earth won't be so good. All right, you bring out in the park somewhere, or your home garden, generally that is fine. Um, number seven is uh, essential oils. So um, this has been um, popularized, um, you know, um, there are companies who sell essential oils and those people who are into essential oils, they use essential oils for many things. Uh, essential oils can help the crystals. Some of you will notice that it can help the crystals. Uh, it generally tends to be expensive. Uh, I would say, uh, it can help, but I wouldn't say it's the best method. Okay, I will be sharing with you um, the better methods to use. Uh, number eight is a uh, sound bath. Sound bath is one of the most common methods that is used by uh, crystal sellers. So normally they use crystal bowls, Tibetan singing bowls. They put a crystal inside, and then they, you know, and then they'll do the they'll rub the bowl, and then the bowl will give off certain sound. Now, um, sound bath is generally okay but uh, they are it's dependent on few things firstly who is the one you know who's the one uh, making you know using the instrument if the person using the instrument have very negative energies you're going to find that the person is going to impart their energies onto the crystal so this is the so this is this is something that is uh, not many people know all right those people who use a sound bath the person using the sound instrument the bowl right the bowl is giving off a particular sound but this is combined with the energies of the person who's using the sound bar so you need to be mindful of that so if you don't like the particular person you know you you know you you cannot just go to any crystal shop because some some crystal sellers their energies are not that good so you may have to get your own sound sound bowls okay and the only thing is this 
Now, when it comes to sound bath, bear in mind that in general, the frequency that is given off by the sound bath is quite uh, fixed. All right, it's quite fixed. So, um, it cannot do the most proper cleansing. Okay. And number nine. So, number nine is uh, another thing. Most people, they will use another big crystal. So, they will maybe find a big crystal cave. You put a smaller crystal on top of it or some other crystal. Right, they will put it on top of it and um, the big crystal will absorb the negative energy from maybe the smaller crystal. And the question is this, so how do you cleanse the bigger crystal? You still need something, <laughs> alright? So um, if you, you yes, you can use a bigger crystal or a more powerful crystal to cleanse or heal the smaller crystal, but then you need to deal with the big crystal. You need to cleanse the big crystal. Okay, so um, these are the normal ways and let me just um, go through some of your questions first before I share with you all the methods. So Evan is asking, is today's topic excluding the lead uh, man-made crystals? Now, okay, um, so I can talk a little bit about man-made crystals. So man-made crystals and natural crystals, they, their energy is very different. All right, so um, magnetic crystals does not have does not have um, uh, most of the energies that a natural crystal have. It has the mineral. That means the substance itself is the same. But you will notice that it does not quite have the energies that natural crystals have that are beneficial for humans. Those of you, if you are sensitive to energies, you will notice that. Most of the man-made crystals, right, they, the, the energies is just like, you know, just like flat kind of thing. It's just like empty. It doesn't have the kind of um, energies as natural crystals. So, um, yes, we can use uh, these are methods, uh, but most of these methods is designed to help a natural crystal. Um, Edwin, again, can micro cracks crystals still usable for energy work? Yes. So a lot of crystals, they have uh, tiny cracks or um, imperfections in them. That is totally fine. Can small crystal be healed by mother crystals? So yes, so I mentioned you can use another crystal, but then how are you going you need to help? You need to help the bigger crystals one that's done. Again, Edwin, can re-machine consider uh, one of the clans I think method that means um, uh, for some people they will take the crystal and machine it again, uh, cut it again. Now, um, every time a crystal is being cut, it gets damaged. All right, when a crystal is being cut or whatever, it gets damaged and it, its energy gets weaker and weaker. Okay, so um, if you ask me, I prefer to work with rough crystals. That means as natural as it is, then this energy is as as complete as the original. So the more machining it does, the energy gets weakened and weakened. Joey is asking where to keep when not wearing. You, know, you can keep it anywhere, all right? Anywhere where the energies are decent. Edwin again, need to cleanse one crystal each time if touched by third party. Now, uh, it depends, all right? So it depends who the third party is. If the third party is someone whose energies are not very good, then the crystal can absorb negative energy from a third party, then you will want to cleanse it. So it's totally entirely up to you. So if you can sense energies, you might want it cleansed. So yes, um, but you know, if you happen to pass a crystal to me, I'm the one who's cleansing the crystal. So you know, if I'm the third party, it's quite safe. So it depends on what type of crystal and who's the person. Uh, I just asking a very good question. How do I know if a crystal is draining my energy? So um, very simple. Uh, those of you who are learning um, our methods like light meditation, UQ and all that, especially light meditation. A very simple example, uh, a simple test we teach people is this. You do a light meditation and sense your light before putting on the crystal. And if you put on the crystal and your level of light decreases, then you know the crystal is bad for you. All right, if you can sense your light and after wearing the crystal or touching the crystal, your light increases, then you know the crystal is good for you. So that's 
general method. So you have to sense energy. So one of the methods we do is uh, we get everyone to do the light meditation and train to sense your light. Or, well, um, you need to kind of be able to sense that or you will have to find someone, right, uh, who is sensitive enough who can do some energy reading, energy sensing to tell you. Stephanie is asking, are, are there any crystals that self-cleanse themselves? Now, um, there are a lot of claims that some crystals can self-cleanse themselves. Um, it is only true to a very little degree. So, if the, so at the end of the day, it depends on what is the nature of the opposing energies. If the opposing negative energies are too much, it will swamp over any, um, any crystals that can self-cleanse. But, um, so for example, a famous type of crystal that they claim to be able to self-cleanse is selenite. I tell you, it's not that true. It's not that true, all right? Uh, selenite is quite resilient uh, to negative energies for normal negative energies, but it can still be overwhelmed by stronger negative energies. So, and it does not really self-cleanse in so far um, as I observe. So, um, and what... Whatever other crystals too, I, I don't see a proper crystal that can actually self cleanse itself, unless, um, uh, for me, I train my own crystals to self cleanse themselves. All right, I train my crystals to self cleanse themselves, and uh, usually it's through doing light meditation together with them. Uh, those of you who used to know us long, long time ago, we used to conduct um. Uh, that's before the pandemic. We used to conduct um, meditation in person. So, and people will come to my place. And if you come to my place, my place here is entirely filled with crystals. And then we'll do meditation with crystals. And uh, you will see that I train my crystals to self-cleanse. So most crystals cannot self-cleanse unless you, your, as the owner, train them to do so. So, Edwin again. Will heat the crystal able to cleanse as well? All right, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so if you're talking about heating, you need to be aware what kind of crystals because most crystals, um, when you heat them, they get damaged. So they cannot uh, be exposed to the sun and so on. So you need to be aware. So yes, crystals, a lot of crystals will form um, through heat and from heat, they cool down, then they become crystals. All right. Usually when you heat them up again, they get melted or they get destroyed. So usually heat is not good for crystals, all right, in general. And uh, Edwin is asking, is crystal bed, chair, furniture need to be cleansed before use? Yes, all crystals, they will absorb negative energy. So you need, you should always be cleansing and caring for your crystals. All right, I'll be sharing with you all the, the best method or, or amongst the best method and at least a method that I can share with the public. Uh, those of you who are learning uh, immunity from us, you will learn more advanced methods, of course. Right? But for the general public, I will share with you all certain methods that you can use. Evie is asking a very good question, how to know a crystal is tainted? So um, again, um, you know, the light meditation is one of the ways. All right? So if you can sense your light, your energies, and if the crystal causes your light or your energies to decrease, then you know there's something wrong with the crystal. So the crystal is not compatible for you or it's tainted, something like that. Cassandra is asking, I understood that black obsidian, jet, and black tourmaline doesn't absorb but bounces off energies. Is this understanding correct? No. They still absorb. So you just take the black obsidian, jet, and black tourmaline, in fact, black tourmaline is, is, is very good for absorbing negative energies, all right? And you still need to cleanse. Edwin, any crystal that can't be tainted, Ibu, Batu, no. Nothing, yeah, no, I've not encountered something like that. Um, but I do train some of my, my crystals. Some of my crystals are very, um, very well trained, very powerful. All right, uh, usually they are my personal crystals and they can't be tainted. Uh, in order for crystals not to be tainted, you as the owner, you have to learn very high level energy ability to not taint it. So uh, some of my clients, they actually request for that if they work with crystals long term, right? They actually come and look for us and then we will, 
we will do something to seal the crystals from being tainted we can heal it and all kinds of stuff all right so uh, but otherwise in nature they do not exist like that you uh, you need to um, get someone who's very good at energy to do it for you Ijo is asking can a crystal cave be used to cleanse smaller crystals yes so i did mention that already all right use another big crystal and if i cleanse a smaller crystal using larger crystals how do i need to how long do i need to put it on so everything um uh, that's a very good question you know uh, you put it on a big crystal how long do you know how long should you put it on a big crystal you need to be able to sense the energies in the smaller crystal but again the big question is are you sure your big crystal is you know is is uh it's like a vacuum cleaner whose bag has been emptied out because if your big crystal if the big crystal has become um packed with negative energies the big crystal is going to transfer is negative energies to any crystal that you put on on it including crystal caves so this is um, um this is not entirely the best method all right that's why i'm going through all these normal methods that are commonly out there if you guys know something else i can uh, you know we can discuss this here but otherwise i will share with you our methods which is entirely based on energy and which i think is way better than any of the methods um mentioned here Again, Ijo, can I use a crystal grid to cleanse crystals that absorb negative energies? If yes, please suggest which crystals to use. Um, crystal grid is... Um, uh, I don't know whether you are at the level whereby you can actually effectively use crystal grid. So I've seen a lot of people claiming to do crystal grids, but uh, it's more like they place crystals in a certain formation, but, but it doesn't mean the crystal gets gridded. If, there is if you can actually grid a crystal then um uh, for people who are skilled in energy they will know and they can sense that there is a real proper crystal energy grid so yeah a lot of people talk about this crystal energy reading and um, um to me uh, talk is easy if 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 i can feel it then I, yeah okay i'll acknowledge it but can it be done? So yes, it can be done. But again, any crystals that are used for grilling is still absorb negative energies from the environment and is still so and it will be trying to give its positive energies to the grid. Alright, so you need to take care and care for the crystals. So um any crystals that use like in grilling when it's bending and giving energies to the grid, for example, and the grid is um so let's say it's a protective grid. All right, so a uh, 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 common method is to use crystals to form a protective grid and the protection is being attacked by negative energies, right? So um, then the crystal's energy itself may wane over time, may weaken over time. So you will also need to learn how to care for the crystals to help it recharge, right? So and, and uh, which is going to bring us right to the method that i can share with you all that will help the crystals do this both right recharge and cleanse so um any other questions before i i share with you all this um uh, in, in general it's the same method any questions all right so now i'm going to share with you all something about crystals Crystals have uh, different energies. Okay, I'm going to share with you all. Uh, this is something I teach in uh, my module 10. All right, I'm sharing with you all for free. Now, crystal energies have three types. First is the mineral. It has energy that comes from the mineral. Mineral means a substance, right? Like a quartz. Quartz will be silicon dioxide. You know quartz is silicon dioxide. Now, those of you who know chemistry, all right. So uh, crystals are form of minerals, and the min minerals arrange themselves in crystalline form. So uh, the first energy that it gets by default is uh, mineral energy. All right. The second type of energy it, it gets is a chi energy. So chi energy is the energy of the earth. All right, and uh, many many life forms have this uh, chi energy, including humans. All right, very similar, but crystals also have the chi. Most crystals don't have much of chi. Um, it's generally quite low. But certain crystals, certain material can have a very high level of chi, 
and uh, those crystals um, will be very good for physical health. So, but uh, the key, the key energy, all right, that crystals have, right, that is helping us is this energy that I call light. There's is an invisible light kind of thing. It's an aura. Most crystals have a light aura for people who are clairvoyant at least clairvoyant in the right frequency because clairvoyants, uh, different clairvoyants, they see in different frequencies. So some clairvoyants will be able to see the light in crystals and this light in crystals is the light that is helping every, uh, that is in general what people are looking for when you look to buy a crystal for energies. It's usually this light. All right. Now those of you who have been following us, you will also hear it uh, in my light meditation uh, class that we humans also have light yeah humans have light and crystals have light so and um, we are going to use this fact to help the crystals okay and in humans the light um, the Indians who call it prana the Indians who call it prana is uh, to us is an invisible form of light Okay, and this light, so if you're aware, the prana is the energies that flow in the chakras. It will form the chakras and everything. And that is why a lot of people, they discover that crystals can help the chakras. Huh? Everyone knows about this? Okay, so there is this light in crystals. Teacher is saying, does Jasper tend to have more chi? This type of crystal jelly feels like it has a lot of vitality and it's good for the body, especially red Jasper. Yes, uh, uh, Jasper has more than uh, maybe quartz so it depends and there are certain types of crystals they really have uh, more chi okay so these are the three main types of energies that uh, crystals have and the key energy that is going to be very useful is the third one the light now the light is a form of energy right that we humans have so and we can uh, the good thing about us humans is if you know how if you know how you can use you can you can strengthen your light and you can put crystals around you and then your own light can cleanse and recharge the crystals and we we do this right so we actually teach this and uh, there's no class for it right now um let's see the class will be next sunday so if you're interested so one of the easiest way is we do our light meditation okay don't mind the fireworks so we teach people to do light meditation and many of you uh, when you approach me how to cleanse your crystals i will say do light meditation and put your crystals next to you this is the reason why all right when you shine light during your light meditation, your light will be able to cleanse and recharge the crystals. Okay, so light meditation is the way uh, and uh, I was sharing with you in the old days um, before the pandemic when we are still doing meditations in person. Um, so we do the crystal meditation. Essentially, it's light meditation with crystals and everyone can bring the crystals and the crystals will also shine the light. All right, my crystals will also, um, my crystals are trained to shine light even. So, um, and then the crystals can even heal humans, but uh, they need to be trained. Okay, so how we can do it is we ourselves do the light meditation. Okay, so um, if you are interested, please attend one of our light meditation sessions or classes. Normally it's done online once a month and it's on a free or donation basis. So you can learn that. I have another better method, uh, not saying okay, another method which uh, most people can use, and many people are um, uh, even if they don't learn light meditation, they can they will be able to do it. Tisha again, so crystals have chi and prana system too. No, they don't actually have a system, so it actually is different, all right. And uh, we'll um, I will actually talk more about it uh, for those who are interested to learn. Uh, I teach that in infinity, but module ten, so uh, quite a long way to go. But this is a uh, this is uh, what I share in infinity module ten. Right, these are basics of crystals. We need to understand this is the three basic energies. 
So um, I think not many people are aware of this. So Edwin is asking, is each crystal react or compatible to gold or silver pendant chain differently? Uh, yeah, so you can have all this gold and everything. In general, crystals are okay with gold or silver, all right? And um, what, is, what is more important is um, the compatibility between the, the user and the gold silver, right? Some people can't wear silver, some people, uh, most people can wear gold. Gold is not very reactive. And you've got to take into consideration the effect of gold and silver on the person plus the effect of crystals on the person. So normally um, for us, at least for myself and uh, those who I train, we are quite particular about energy compatibility. We try to take into account everything and make sure energy compatibility is higher. Tisha says, I find it hard to do light meditation with crystals with strong negative energies, not surprisingly. Lots of op opposition is challenging. Yes. So like I uh, was trying to warn everyone, a lot of crystals have uh, tainted energies or strong negative energies. and. Um, that's why I, I, at this stage, I do not actually encourage many people to just go and buy crystals. All right, so, um, but if you can't do light meditation, all right, or you don't know light meditation, we have another methods. All right, we're gonna use, in general, different ways of generating light. Now, um, light meditation will generate light so the idea is light meditation, we want to have light, okay? So we want to have this light. So what else can generate light? Now, uh, not many people are aware, but Divine prayers and mantras can generate light. All right. Um, this is something we discovered. Divine prayers and mantras, when people chant, their own light strengthens. All right. And if you do it in the presence of crystals, you can also strengthen the crystal's light. All right. So I'm going to share with you all this, uh, this method. Now, um, I understand it's kind of um, sensitive. Not everyone has a religion, all right? And uh, there are many different religions. So I'm gonna share in general uh, the, um, the, the main religions and what kind of prayers and mantras that you can use, okay? And uh, I'm just gonna go by uh, alphabetical order. Okay, so um, let's start with Buddhism by alphabetical order huh? so that I don't offend anyone why this, this religion first so um, in Buddhism there are quite a few mantras that you can use okay so um, I do encourage to use mantras that are generally more famous so it, the I would say for Buddhism Right, in Buddhism, the highest Buddha is known as Amitabha or the, the culture is very strong in China. So in China, it's called Amitwofo. All right, Chinese. So the mantra would be Namo Amitwofo or Namo Amitabha. All right, it's Namo. Um, so Namo Amitabha is more of a Mahayana practice or Namo Amitabha, maybe uh, Tibetan, they will have it. So there are other mantras. Uh, for Theravada, okay, so for Theravada, I'm going to let you all know. Um, Theravada um, in Thailand, the Theravada mantra is uh, quite long, all right, it's quite long. And... Um, the energies, unfortunately, do not generate light very well. All right. The I believe the Thailand mantra was a little bit um, someone added to it because the the 
the Thai or Pali mantra, all right, that will work is actually this. Right, those of you who are sensitive to energy, you can try it for yourself. Namo sama sam putasa. Enough. So, um, in Thai Theravada tradition now, um, the what was the original mantra has been kind of elongated to be become Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sam putasa. Right, those of you who can feel energy, all right? Uh, can you just listen and see whether your energy responds and whether your light responds? Namo sama sam putasa. Namo sama sam putasa. And the crown reacts, the light reacts. But when you do namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sam putasa, the energy, the light doesn't quite react. So um, maybe because you know they really want to, um, I think maybe some monk or you know, they really want to pay respect to Buddha and they add a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, words to praise Buddha and uh, so it became no longer effective. But essentially, um, any one of you who look into Buddhist mantras is normally a very simple one, Namo, followed by the Buddha's uh, name or something like that. So, actually, so Namo, Sama, Sam, Putasa will work. Alright, so for Buddhist, you can chant this one. Um, Edwin, the mantra that you put on the chat it is not potent. Uh, it doesn't have much effect. Lotus Sutra, okay, Lotus Sutra is very long, okay. Um, I normally don't recommend people to use the sutras because sutras is very long. And um, for some of you, you may notice that if you use sutras, if you mispronounce your sutras, your, your sutra energy is not as, you know, maybe as, as you read, you cough, you know, you cough because your throat is dry. And then the energy will peter out. Because um, the longer the mantra, you know, it needs to be read entirely and then it will activate. So um, sometimes short mantras has its um, advantages. You just a short mantra, you just read it, all right, and try to vocalize it, okay? Vocalize it with voice, huh? Don't just, um, it generally is better. So if you can read it or you say it out, the mantra, and then the, it will energize and then the light will respond. It will emit light or you will start to emit light the mantra will cause you to emit light and uh, sometimes even the crystals will respond and tisha tisha says longer version feels emptier but usually uh that was referring to the namotasa right yes so yeah so the theravada uh, mantra is actually uh, i believe the original one Right, if this one, Namo Sama Sam Putasa. Those of you who are energy sensitive, you will be able to feel it. Okay. So this is a Buddhism. So uh, in Christianity, all right, so um, the next religion is Tianiti. Okay, um, it will be the Lord's Prayer. All right, you use the Lord's Prayer. So there are several versions. Uh, please use the shorter version. That, um, what do I mean the so-called shorter version? Okay, the version that I normally use goes like this, all right? Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The long version is the one uh, with the for uh, time glory and whatever, whatever added to it. The long version is, I find, again, it's kind of like adulterated, like you add too much and then the, the energy just kind of fizzle out. Okay, so uh, use the shorter version. So uh, for me, I use, um, when I start, I use Heavenly Father. There are those who use um, uh, our Father who are in heaven. You can use that one also, okay? So uh, for Christianity, Lord's Prayer is kind of long. Okay, but uh, that is one of the prayers that are very effective. And then the next one would be uh, Hinduism. So 
So Hinduism, there are um, uh, quite a number of uh, gods, deities. Most of them work. Um, for for Shiva mantra, I don't recommend Om Namah Shivaya because the energy is not quite there. But if you're interested in the Shiva mantra, you would want to use this Ha Ha Mahadev. You can use Ganesha Mantra, Om Gan Ganapate Namaha. You can use Vishnu Mantra. You can use um, quite a lot of different mantras. So I'm not going to list down um, everything. But um, so like Ganesha is uh, Om Gam Ganapate Namaha. All right. So uh, this can work as well. So Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, and then uh, you have Islam. So uh, Islam, you can do the Bismillah. All right. So um, it's Bismillah. Il Rahman. Il Rahim. Alright, so um, these are the list of uh, prayers, energies, uh, prayers and mantras that you can use. Now, how do you do it? Alright, um, how do you do it? Let me put it, um, uh, uh, how? So, um, if you're into chanting mantras, those of you, you all will know about like malas, right? Uh, uh, one mala, two mala. So uh, you want you may want to use malas to keep track. So one mala is hundred and eight repetitions. So normally I would recommend this. First of all, you need to cleanse yourself. All right. So to cleanse, um, to cleanse self. So you do for yourself first without the crystals. Um, do at least um ten malas, ten malas. All right, or minimum half an hour, minimum uh, 30 or minimum 30 minutes. I'm going to save some space or minimum 30 minutes. Minimum. So before you cleanse your crystals, you need to cleanse self first and you do your prayers or mantra chanting for minimum 30 minutes or 10 malas. If you can, or ten rounds, long rounds, huh? For Islam, for Islam, the rounds would be ninety-nine repetitions, right? For the um, Hinduism, Buddhism is one hundred eight per, per per revolution per mala. Well, for Christianity, if you're using the um, rosary, all right, um, it's quite, it's it's quite um. Uh, instead of malas, you count by decades. So one decade means ten repetition of the of the Lord's prayer. So after you cleanse yourself, right? Then you cleanse. Then only you cleanse crystal. All right. So typically, all right. So after you chant and every and everything, the second. Um, the second part, you either put the crystals on around you or onto you, you can wear them, then you chant. Or as you chant, you intend or imagine whatever you're chanting, whatever you're praying, the light energy goes out to cleanse and recharge the crystals. Right? It's very simple, yeah? So first of all, you go through a stage where you cleanse yourself first, and then you cleanse the crystal. Alright, so again, all right, you will do, try to do at least 10 malas for the crystal and at least minimum 30 minutes. So you, I would say for normal people, you will take at least one hour to get something properly done. Now, it's very important to first cleanse yourself, okay? 
like a uh, teacher was uh, mentioning, you know, she's gotten some crystals whose energies are quite strongly negative. So if you don't enhance your own energies first by chanting the prayers and mantras for yourself, strengthening your energies first, it may not work very well. All right, it may not work very well. Then the second method, uh, then only the second part, then only you use the mantras or prayer energies. Okay, now, Edwin is asking, isn't the purification of the person who chant the mantras important in order for the mantras to be effective? Yes, so that's why we do this. All right, we, we purify first. So this is generally the way we do it. This is the um, so-called religious method, but there is a non-religious method. All right, let me end with by showing a non-religious method. So this is a... Um, So in non-religious method, we need to use pure energies. Pure energies. And normally I recommend people to use pure energies of good values. For example, love. But I need to share a little bit, talk a little bit about this. Now love, so a lot of people will imagine that, you know, they will just um, um, use the energies of love. But for many people, when it comes to love, love is actually, um, most people's love is not so pure. All right. So even when you talk about love for spouse or love in general, uh, our love, most people's love is very conditional, all right? So what we need to do is we need to find, for example, when you're using love, a subset of our love which is not so conditional, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Now, for example, um, many people will will you know when it comes to love their love is kind of jaded especially for humans all right but when we when it comes to love for their children love for babies love for their pets or some even love for animals their love becomes purer do you all get what i mean yes have you all found this to be true Right, for yourself or for other people. So you got to learn to use a, uh, I would advise if you're using this, try to use a specific love that is pure. All right, that is pure. So, um, for a lot of people, it would be something very simple like love for young children, love for babies, or love for their pets. All right, I find that when I ask people to generate, to think about such things and generate the love that they feel for them, they're able to do so. So again, you will do a similar practice. So you try to generate this energy, all right? This energy whereby you cleanse yourself. So you imagine this love for, let's say for babies, which is so pure, you know, or love for uh, pets and animals, which you feel in yourself is so pure and it's cleansing yourself, releasing all the negative energies from yourself. All right. And strengthening your own energy, strengthening your light. All right. Uh, one of the things is um, our light response to values, right? The reason why we use values is because a light respond to good values. Light responds to good values to goodness. So when you use values and you generate this kind of values, this kind of love, for example, can be love, compassion, kindness, patience, and so on, you will be able to strengthen your light and you spend at least half an hour doing that for yourself. Then only you 
the next half an hour you do it for your crystals you put your crystals around you okay or on you or you touch your crystals as you generate that kind of a specific love that is pure right you use it to cleanse your crystals okay so with that um that is how you will care for and cleanse your crystals especially the energy side so with that i think um, that is what i have to share with you on this topic do you have any last minute questions all right Evan says thanks cat welcome is everyone good is everyone clear with this is are the instructions clear quite simple yeah all right if okay cassandra said very clear Xiaofan asking in Shiva's mantra, why better the Haha Mahadev? So Xiaofan, uh, you, you have learned the other Shiva mantra, all right? You can use the other Shiva mantra. This Haha Mahadev is a less, uh, is a less, um, is a less famous Shiva mantra, but at least it's Googleable. You can find it on Google, all right? Uh, the Shiva mantra that I give to Hindi students, uh, it's not you cannot even find it on Google. So you know, people. Uh, if I give that mantra, I'll have a lot of people challenging me and saying where you come up with this mantra. So I'm not going to use that mantra. Whereas this Haha Mahadev, you can Google and you find that this is also a mantra of Shiva. Okay. Any more questions before we call it a night, a day? All right. Then uh, if there are no more questions, thank you for having me. All right, um, if you're interested in uh, Unity Qigong, okay, we are teaching Unity Qigong tomorrow night, same time, right, 9 p.m. Malaysia time. If you're interested in learning light meditation, it'll be next Sunday, 9 p.m., all right? And if you feel that you've benefited from this talk and would like to support our online events, you're free to make a donation. How to make a donation will be on our groups where you got the um zoom link and password okay thank you very much for your support and i hope to see you all again thank you have a good day good night and goodbye